Now, uh, I said uh, about Mullins. Mullins uh, had a particular picture of a chestnut mare that was sold for six million in the 1980s. Now, who knows whether this chestnut mare is going to be sold for six million in the future? Is she still at home? Is she still at home? Mr. Gelding. Okay, Mr. Gelding. <laughs> well, most, most people, uh, when they sold horses to somebody that knows about horses and etc., even if it was a mare, they'd say it was a gelding. And there was a big thing against Chester. Yeah. Big thing against Chester. Now we've got to be more sensitive. We don't know exactly what I'm like to know. But the one that really attracted my attention is the one over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> left and right. <laughs> Ronald Duncan wrote some wonderful words about horses, and he said, Where grace is laced by muscle, and strength by gentleness confined. Where grace is laced by muscle, and strength by gentleness confined. He serves without stability. He has fought without energy. And to me, I'm looking at that chest that yeah. that comes from the saddle or whatever. To me, it actually looks more like uh, one of the coloured drum horses in the household cavalry. They always have four coloured horses in the household cavalry in Britain. To see that horse, that key, despite those raw cuts, fierce, difficult throws on his back, because that's exactly what those horses were like. And of course, these were the horses that went to war. These were the horses that went to left Ireland at the rate of 1,000 a week, even at the time of the Second World War. Can you imagine that? 1,000 a week leaving the shores to go to war. And of course, they did fantastically well because they were a sexual champion. Most of them were three quarter Irish class, more drafty than in Terrebrae. But, but what courage they had to face the fire and what attention they had to be like to be so peaceful. That just resonates with me, and all of the pictures, they tell a particular story to me, and I think that's the nice thing, rather than just being truly photographic, it allows the individual to look at them and, and have their own feelings, their own stories, being w welling up from one path. And then, of course, the grey horse here, that is so much money. But you know which horse I'd rather have in, 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 in my house is this one here. Absolutely superb. It just just tells me everything I want about a horse. It gives me that feeling that this is a horse that can do this and good. And but every time that I've come back this evening and yesterday, it just looks at me in a slightly different way. And it's interesting you can go up forward, you can go up back, and it stays with me too. Yeah. It's unusual. It's very unusual. So there's a very modest man who painted these, and I knew Ian because he did the sculpture outside the FEI headquarters at the International Body in Lausanne in Switzerland. The, uh, a sculpture of seven leaves, a solidarity sculpture bringing the dis different disciplines together. But Ian brings together some extraordinary qualities, and you'd probably say that this is, this, he, he, these are not particularly special. But by God, that they are special. And I'm so pleased to be here tonight for the exhibition. Thank you, William. I have a few words of thanks, particularly for William. I mean, my head exploded <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> but for, for to get William as a, a serious horse, the insight into the character of a, a horse who's depicted the painting is um, So I just said thank you, William. Um, I'd like to thank the Signal Gallery for giving me the space to show the work. I'd love to thank my, my wife Susan for because she was sort of evicted from her own studio for the last year <laughs> while, I, while I did the work. Thank my daughters, both the Compass Horse Room, for their constructive criticism. Um, and to thank my models. The horses, of course, who were so patient to <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming.